Hey, it's Chris. Today we're doing such a deep dive into iOS 17 settings that even a submarine would feel like it was getting altitude sickness. Now, instead of showing off every single brand new setting that you could possibly change, today I'm just gonna show you my favorites. I guess you could say I'm setting the bar higher, but unfortunately that doesn't apply to the dad jokes. In iOS 17, iMessage got lots of interesting updates. It's easier to see things that have been shared with you. You can pin content that you wanna come back to later. And one big change has to do with this app screen when you tap on the plus icon there, you see all these apps that you can integrate into iMessages. This whole screen has been redesigned and it's kind of iconic now, and I mean that literally. But if you're a minimalist and you know you're not gonna use a lot of those icons or apps, you wanna keep things a little less absurd, you can make this screen a little more app appealing by grabbing items and just moving them where you want them. Or you can get into settings, go to messages, and then iMessage apps, and you can turn on or off various apps that you have installed there if you want things to be a little less cluttered. Makes it a little bit easier to get to what I'm after. Now, one thing that Apple added a ton of in iOS 17 was new ringtones, kind of a ring vention, if you will. And if you wanna get in on the ring awakening, then you go to settings, sounds, and haptics, and then go to ringtone, obviously, and there's a bunch of new ones that you can check out. And by the way, even the default has been changed a little bit, it sounds different. And don't forget to check out the new text tones as well because there's a bunch of new ones there as well. Let's talk about Apple Music and the perfect transition into this setting would be to say that Apple's brought crossfade to Apple Music now so that songs don't end so abruptly. And actually when you turn this feature on in settings, it's gonna translate to your CarPlay setup as well. So if you get into settings, music, and then crossfade, you can turn that on. And I actually feel like this is a nice upgrade. Spotify's had crossfade for a while, so this is really Apple blending in, so to speak. One feature that I've loved for years on my Apple Watch is the ability to hit this button to ping my iPhone. But now, in what you might call a timely turn of events, the iPhone can return the favor and watch over your Apple Watch by going to settings, control center, and then adding in ping my watch. And what that does is add in this button on your control center, which lets you do exactly that. Now, standby mode is one of the best new features in iOS 17. It's really nice to have a bunch of widgets glanceable while you're charging. Some notifications that pop in might be kind of sensitive and for your eyes only. But if you go to settings, standby, and toggle show preview on tap only, notifications that pop up in standby mode will need to be tapped on for absolute privacy, which gives a whole new meaning to the term touchy subjects. Now, while you're in those standby settings, you might also wanna go in and turn on night mode and turn on motion to wake, because let's say you have some pets roaming around at night, maybe you don't want that thing waking up, being really bright and in your face every time the cat comes around. Now, one of the biggest new features to come to iOS 17 is the ability to add a contact poster or what people are gonna see when you call them. You could call it a delightful change. To edit your contact poster, you're gonna open your phone app, tap on the edit button in the top left, and then tap on your name and photo. And you can actually go in and edit the way that contact posters show up for your contacts as well if you don't like what they came up with. Definitely a good idea to make sure everything's calibrated the way that you want. Now, many Apple users have loved focus mode since iOS 15, but they've asked Apple to continue making improvements to the already powerful productivity feature. Well, task and ye shall receive. If you head into settings and focus and pick one of your focus modes, there's the ability to now silence notifications either always or while locked. So I really like how this gives you more control over the distractions that can reach you while you're in a focus mode. Speaking of focus modes and productivity, I gotta let you know my productivity course is 30% off right now so you can focus on being more productive, 30% off so you can be 100% on. It's linked up down below so you can turn your burnout into Learnout. Now, this year's Pro iPhones take great photos, but great photos take great amounts of space to store. Well, they did, but they don't have to. You see, the new Heath Max format, I'm just pronouncing it like Apple pronounces it, really lends itself to capturing quality, not quantity. If you head into settings, camera, and formats, and then scroll down to Pro Default, you can switch that from Pro Raw Max, which was a 48 megapixel shot, to Heath Max, which is still a 48 megapixel shot, but one that only takes up five megabytes of storage instead of 75, which you got with the Pro Raw. So once you have that enabled and you fire up your native camera app up in the top right here, you're gonna be able to switch between the Heath Max, Raw, or Raw Max formats there. Now, if you're an AirPods Pro 1, AirPods Pro 2, or AirPods 3 user, there's a new option here to mute or unmute calls 
by pressing the button on your AirPods themselves. Basically, it's a great way to stem unwanted noise. To set this up the way you want, go to settings, Bluetooth, find the AirPods you wanna set up and tap on that little eye next to it and then you'll scroll down a little bit until you see mute and unmute. You can see I've got that set up to press twice. You could have it set up to press once. I recommend having it set to press twice instead of once so you don't accidentally mute something. Now, one of my favorite features that Apple's given us control over in iOS 17 is the ability to adjust the speed of the haptics for haptic touch. So if you go to settings, accessibility, touch, and then haptic touch, you can set that from default to slow or fast. And then you can test drive your settings by tapping on this sample photo here. So if you feel the need for speed, haptically speaking, then this new fast setting is great because the default setting is actually the fast setting from iOS 16. So it's a nice performance touch up, if you know what I mean. Now, it's no secret that every move you make online gets tracked by countless companies, but Safari makes it a little easier now to go on a private sightseeing tour, as in website sightseeing. So if you go to settings, Safari, and scroll all the way down to advanced, then you can click on advanced tracking and fingerprinting protection, which is automatically set to private browsing. But here you can go ahead and set it to all browsing. And that's going to stop companies from tracking everything you do online for all your browsing sessions, not just private browsing. Now, one of the coolest visuals on any phone anywhere is name drop, which lets you easily share contact details with nearby iPhones. But if you only want to drop names and not your guard, then go into settings, general, airdrop, and you can turn off bringing devices together. Now this feature is cool. There's a lot of wow factor involved, but it can get old when that auto activates, depending on how many people with iPhones you find yourself in close proximity to. Now one of the coolest and also most underrated features of iOS 17 is the ability to auto delete these guys, your one-time login codes, your verification codes. So if you go into settings, passwords, and password options, you can turn on cleanup automatically to automatically delete verification codes and messages and mail after inserting with autofill. But a little insider tip for you, you can still find those in your deleted messages if for some reason you still need it afterwards. One feature I know a lot of people are excited about are the enhancements to the check-in feature in iMessage, which of course lets you let your loved ones keep an eye on your whereabouts and your device. So they'll be able to see things like where your device is at on a map, for instance, but maybe you wanna map out your boundaries a little bit better or you wanna better coordinate your privacy, you can go into the check-in settings and messages and change that from limited to full or vice versa. And last but not least, you know that it's important to look out for your eye health and Apple's made it a little bit easier to do. When you go to settings, screen time, and then screen distance, you'll be able to help reduce your eye strain, the risk of myopia in children, for instance, which is actually turned off by default. So you can go in there and get that enabled. So those are some of the features that I feel like are worth changing to get the most out of your new iPhone or your older iPhone with iOS 17. Don't forget to check out the course, 30% off, so you can be 100% on. A lot of you don't know that we also have a newsletter that comes out on Fridays to help you discover the best apps and accessories for your Apple stuff. Check that out, it's linked up down below too. And other than that, I'll catch you in the next video. Later.